All right. Now the fun stuff. There Let's talk go. equipment. So those are the stands. Four and a half acres, 30,000 square foot building, about 5,000 tons stored inside, brand new scale. Next week, there will be a fire rated wall here, so this spot we just walked through will be separate. Okay, so we're coming in hot. I'm just gonna hit record on this thing because uh, I'm super excited about being here. Hanging in the office of the man, Troy Clog. What's up, boss? Hey guys. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> a beautiful day. It's a chilly cook-off day, man. You got a perfect day to stop in. I'm coming in the bomb, the, uh, the beautiful day. There's so many people here. Uh, I'm like, Troy, can I just get you for 10, 15 minutes? You're like, sure, fine. But actually, I was here yesterday for about two hours. Com completely over uh, staying my welcome. <laughs> we did a really, really good podcast. So if you guys didn't check that one out, Check that out, uh, we'll leave a link in the description. So we're back over here at uh, your casa. We are. And back in the office, we're gonna do a little uh, shop tour. Make sure you guys watch the whole way through because halfway through, uh, you wanna give a little teaser, uh, Great Deal Products is yep. moving locations. It is, moving locations to a much bigger place, indoor salt, thousands of tons, hot pink de-icer, snow plow parts, to all our buddies out in the Brighton, Michigan market, and obviously we ship that hot pink all over the country. Yeah. But a brand new home, just like the one we're about to walk around here, we did this for the construction and, and lawn and snow company in 2017. Yeah. Now we got the other one set up to open by December 1st, and away we go. Just cool. keep having fun. All right, well, let's do a little uh, outdoor tour. Uh, first off, before we jump too far into the video, big shout out to Billy Go Western and Buyers for sponsoring this tour and showing you guys all these cool shop tours. If you guys appreciate these things, big thumbs up on the video. Maybe leave me a comment down below, something that's cool that catches your eye. I know Troy reads the comments, I read the comments. Super appreciate that. So uh, first things first, you wanna do a little office tour then we're going out to the yard, is that right? Yeah, I think we'll do just do a part of the office because okay. maybe you decide if we wanna end down there where there's like 100 people partying and live music <laughs> at the chili cook-off at that end. Well, I'm following you. Here but, all right, so we're just gonna dip in this side and then we're gonna come back. Okay. So you're in my office now. Yep. Uh, By the way, the uh, the janitor's closet, the, right? Remember, you guys remember that. <laughs> Before we get to, to it close to live me, this end of the building is uh, contract management, Jeff's <laughs> dipping out Bye bye. Um, <laughs> this way is operations, finance, the front door is down this way. So this is where all the administrative stuff goes on. And again, we'll likely end or get near the party before it's over. So by the way, what's the chili cook-off? It's a chili cook-off. <laughs> it's a reason to get together. There so there are people coming in from the, from the field, tasting, there's at least 10 different versions in there, taste and then vote. Um, there are people came, the Diaz family came in from Chicago to do a tour. So they've been on all of our stuff today and learn, learn from us and us to learn from them. Uh, there are customers here, there are friends here, there's family here, even Brian's here. I know, right? Like there's a little bit of everybody <laughs> here and we like to do that well, several you said, times a year. You said free food, so I was- I did. It, it, I was here in seven minutes. I did. It takes 12. Something like that, you move, <laughs> you move fast. So we'll, we'll get in there later, but if you look down this hall, mostly the point is- Yeah. These are all the operations managers and offices and right around that corner, you're back outside again to all the equipment and all the fleet. We'll just get there a different way. We'll go this way. I'm following you, brother. All right, man, let's go this way. There you go. So, back to the janitor's office. Um, the hot pink de-icer side, um, once again, so my wife, Linda, she has the only, if I can get the light to come on, the only office that doesn't match any of ours with grandchildren and cute pink stuff. Yeah. But Linda finds all the families that we're able to help um, through the philanthropy. So anybody listening, watching, paying attention, buying hot pink, buying raffle tickets at the golf out of any of that, thank you so much from the bottom of our heart. The families that get help, these are a few of them on the wall here, um, are super grateful. So thank you and thanks to Brian for his donation this year. Yeah, well by the way, thank you to all of you guys watching this real time. Uh, Quick update on the hot pink, because uh, what was the results? Oh, stellar. Almost $100,000 raised at that golf outing, so that's unheard of. Um, hopefully more next year with some good friends. Uh, October 6th, the first Friday in October. And back at, back at the same place, Yep. there's Dave, we're headed to the shop. There you go. He loves to be on camera. <laughs> he loves to be on camera. There you go. Um, <laughs> anyhow, we'll, we'll head that way. Dave does run the shop. This board here, so talking snow, we do everything two ways. Everything is digital and in either LMN or another software, but everything is also physical. 
So all these locations in the winter all get populated by magnets. The meetings are held here. This is every pusher, every truck, every loader, every area. This building we're in is finally referred to as Area 51. Okay, okay. Because the address is 51800. There you go. Um, so not only does this work for us to make sure we know where all of our equipment is, it makes a great interactive conversation like, hey, Hey, uh, you know, Brian, you want, uh, I want to use that Prodigy pusher box over in my area. I'll trade with you. Um, just keeps, we have learned technology is super helpful, but touching in this industry, touching, feeling, and both in our construction and this side, huge difference. I, I don't highly recommend it, whether you have five pieces of equipment or 105. How many pieces of equipment do you guys manage or keep organized? How do you, uh, what do you think? You're going to call me a Dave who walked by and knows the gap. <laughs> 120 or 30 trucks, 20 or 30 or 40 loaders, dozens of pushers, wow. um, snow blowers, lawn mowers, yada yada. So how many uh, service partners? Probably another 100, 200. Similar, of similar, similar amount, 150, 200, depending on the year Good and deal. how big they are, right? So a body count of probably a couple hundred people, but you know, depends how many people are on each team. That's that awesome. Us. That's awesome. Um, this room's pretty boring this time of year, so we won't spend much time in here. Um, Sales office, and this is this is fun though, because this is kind of a catch-all right now. Yep. But we do a huge Christmas party. Yeah. Hundreds and hundreds of gifts. All the, you'll be invited if you're a service 100%. partner this year. Yeah, hundred percent. All all the all the employees, all the service partners, bring any family members. Everybody gets a gift. Another party like we're having today. Um, love to see everybody. So we're we're gathering gifts. That's uh, Santa's. I love it. That's Santa's Mrs. Claus's little closet. All right. Now the fun stuff. There Let's talk go. equipment. <laughs> so uh, this this portion of the building, when we moved here in 17, was designed by the mechanics. There are three, um, Greg, Dave, and Steve. Greg, Greg and I have been together since there were just two of us at 17, 18 years old, cutting grass together, wrenching on stuff. Greg is, Greg is awesome. Dave walked by, Steve. So they spend their whole, whole year getting stuff ready for winter gotcha so behind Brian we have some parts we have some random filters and things to make sure we always have them batteries but trucks get in here and they get gone heavily gone through if they can find a, a brake line that might break might go bad we're gonna replace it brakes lots of proactive work ahead of time so they designed all this space they put lifts airlines yeah whatever they wanted so I was out here earlier this is getting some rear brakes um, this one's fine, but they're running through everything. Uh, this is getting some front brakes, a um, few other miscellaneous things. Once we get them all mechanically sound, we sometimes start painting stuff like this, but admittedly, it's not our priority. These trucks are winter only for us. Is that right? Winter only. So we overlap some trucks, but these have all been here a long time, paid for, and they only work in the winter. Okay, okay. So we do a lot of that. Parts, bins, nuts, bolts, all the usual stuff to make sure we have everything. Um, Greg, I saw in there in the chili cook-off, he usually enters one of the best chilies. So this is Greg's world. You never know what he's wrenching on in here. Today, it was this big sterling. Um, I don't even think I saw this bay last time. It might have... Uh, maybe not. Yeah. Um, or maybe he had the big pink truck in here. It was maybe. a big, big pink plow. Maybe. Um, yeah. So he's getting this old, this was an old city truck. We still have a few of these left, not too many. Um, Jeez. They're not as pretty as they used to be, but they run like rock stars and service the customers and we're all about keeping them mechanically sound. Inside the building, although there's a pile of scrap metal like there should be at everybody's building, because there's some scrap. Um, here's where you're going to find some of the leftover plows when we get further out. There's more amounts of leftovers or they go on trucks that aren't being driven. Another couple salt trucks getting ready over there. What's a leftover plow? Is that like, <laughs> well, <laughs> what plow, what plow qualifies the leftover plow? Well, we, got, we have extra everything. <laughs> there you go. Right? And so as you look at some of the age of this stuff, it's even when it's new, we have extra. Sure. Um, we believe in, I mean, if that plow goes down, if we can drop it and throw another plow on and keep moving, we'll right. fix the plow later, right? It, it, it's worth it. Time is, time is everything. So we have extra plows or we've decommissioned the truck and we still have the plow. Mm or the plow goes on one of the one of the estimators trucks. And okay. They're not gonna put it on until it snows, right? So it sits around. Um, yeah, just so a, it goes on over here. I was just out here earlier with, the, with some other folks. A lot of this iron is clearly gone. We have a lot more iron than this. Yep. Um, 
But yeah, some of the winter only loaders, um, some of them are older than you, Brian. <laughs> But uh, they still move snow. Yeah. Every winter. Your uh, quick question for you: Western's uh, one of the tour sponsors. Yep. You're a huge Douglas Dynamics guy, Western guy. Um, one of the questions I get the most is Western, right, versus mm -hmm. Boss. But even just Western, a little plug for these guys. Right. You have tons of wideouts. Uh, I think almost exclusively, unless you yeah, got a couple, almost. couple V blades around. But why, why Western? Why the wideout? Well, so the. <sighs> That story goes back to when we started Hot Pink De-Icer. Okay. Okay, and so we had been running Boss Plows. One, they're from Michigan. Two, they work great. And we'd been running them since the early 90s when they first came out. When we created the Hot Pink De-Icer program and I was looking for an equipment partner to do some stuff in pink, the guys I talked to at Boss um, were not interested in doing a program like that. They're like, no, we don't do that specialty stuff. You know, we paint them red, they work great. I said, well, yeah, you paint them red, they do work great. But I'm looking for a partner. Sure. When Douglas Dynamics said they were interested in doing that program, uh, out with Boss Plows, in with Douglas Dynamics. Okay. Right? Full time, we are still supporting them and they are still supporting us. That's awesome. End of the day, they both make good plows, but I will admit, after 40 years behind, a, behind the wheel, straight blade in this, the amount of snow we get in this market and what we do here, straight blade is far better than a V-blade in most applications, and especially when especially when you have the wings, right? Sure. So to go to 10 feet and some change, be able to angle, be able to contain, get a little cleaner scrape, you use a little less salt. For a guy who had every brand new V-blade for 25 years, um, and still have some, I'd be going with the straight blade. I'd be supporting Douglas Dynamics if I were you. <laughs> there you go. Whether they're pink or not. There you go. Um, I'm sure there was a minimum order though with that pink though. Well, there was, <laughs> and we worked uh, and we worked with um, Snow Axe before they were owned by Douglas Dynamics. Sure. Right? The Truen family is local. They ha we worked together on some salters. They were the first ones. If you look far enough that way, probably. Yeah. They were the first ones to do when they had the Snow Axe salter. They they cast some in pink for us. Okay. Since, oh, I see that, yeah. since then, that has evolved, that Douglas Dynamics will help us. Um, again, you need a decent size order and you need to do it, let them do it when they want to do it. Not like, hey, yeah. it's October, can you, no. <laughs> no, that's not polite. So we still have a lot of stainless. So we, if we can't get our color, we try to default to stainless. Tell them choice um, yeah. And then we paint them, right? So yeah. There's a Svensson that's been painted. There's some old state and county stuff that's been painted. Now are all the um, that's an old Meyer blade that's been around forever. It's fine, right? I mean, no, it's fine, right? These bigger trucks for us in this market, these bigger trucks don't plow a whole lot. Okay. So they're mostly salt trucks, but if they're there and they can help clean out some aisles, they do. Okay. So we plow with mostly with loaders and pushers, and then smaller trucks to do the touch-up plowing and the salting. So now, these, these things, I mean, maybe a roadway, maybe an alleyway. We don't plow a lot with them. What about the, uh, I saw the video of the warehouse back in the day with like the three, 400 plows, like all stacked up. Is that all here or is that still somewhere else? Well, that building is now torn down and is a neighborhood. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that was a building that I bought that I was maybe going to move into. Okay. Um, long story short, Pulte bought it and it is now a neighborhood. Okay. So it's all here then. So now everything is here or another building that's kitty corner across here good lord and likely a little bit out at so there was i was over there today there's 30 or 40 pushers at least that are over there jesus pile of salt there's no salt on this property the salt is on a little satellite location that's again just a few hundred yards from here that's awesome so that's how we run um satellite locations never too much salt or equipment in any one place we like to keep our driving to shorter routes, um, especially when it's snowing. Yeah. So we are here in Wixom, Michigan. We are another one in Brighton. We have one near the Metro Airport. We have in Detroit, South, wherever we have enough work to justify a bin and can legally put a bin, right? Okay. Talk to the community, make sure it's okay. Talk to the property owner. Um, and then they, the people can direct report. Mm -hmm. There's no point in coming here and driving to Southfield, yeah. so to speak. So report to your site, get your stuff warmed up and running and uh, Get after well, well, we were here for subcontractor training a couple weeks ago, yeah. and that really impressed me. I was like, why would people come here anyway? Like, right. take your truck and go. You know, rock and roll. And unless you have to get a truck here or a piece of equipment here, yep. but report to the site. Report here, and then from a maintenance, right, we just left the shop. So the mechanics, again, will either, they will make a decision, have it towed, grab an extra one, 
grab it, they might go out in a service truck and fix it in the field. Sure. It all depends on the severity of the repair, the how bad you need the machine, is it gonna snow again tomorrow? Right. Right, all those things. So we're, we've, we're blessed to reach a point where we're pretty flexible in that regard. Um, and then we have the extra trucks, if you will. So they're not all in yet, no point in turning around, Brian, but behind, when we walk back, this row back here is our landscape crews and enhancement crews. And most of these trucks are summer only. Okay. So again, if we're if it's November, December, and, and we can go do some landscape, we don't have to take apart our truck and put it back together again. All that stuff that I had to do when my business was smaller, and and I and I understand a lot of people are still doing it. I feel for everyone. Yeah. Um, we tried to get past that point, right? Yep, so yep. so we can go do a cleanup without having to take a plow off and yeah. take everything apart. And then tomorrow we could plow snow because it's already set up. That happens all the time in uh, November and April. You know how it goes. Amen. I got the V blade with the uh, the leaf box <laughs> yep. with so, the billy goat. <laughs> and yeah, uh, we'll get to some of those back here. That's so crazy. So behind me is just a uh, random <laughs> landscape supplies, brick and block. We, we do a lot of hardscape, so we store a lot of this. Uh, behind you, Brian, is now one of our newer, larger box trucks, F450. Um, this is Jason's truck. Jason is one of the um, one of the key people here. Well, everybody's a key person here, but Jason Jason does because of his personality profile and his skill set and his observation ability. He does most of our pre-season inspections. Everybody should go out to your sites in the, before the season, mm -hmm. this time of year, get pictures, get videos, document the good, the bad, and the ugly of the site. Don't get blamed for anything throughout the winter in case something happens. If you break it, own up to it. So we're ISO certified, it's what we do. So pre-season inspections, post-season inspections. So there's a lot of video, there's a lot of documentation that goes along with that, spread over hundreds of sites. He also has a 3B license, does some spraying, some stuff for us in the summertime. Um, and likely knowing, knowing him, he'll put a sidewalk crew in there this winter and he'll just keep going. There you go. All right, so I also see a whole nother freaking row. It never ends, man. This is crazy. Right, so <laughs> it is what it is. So this stuff behind me is all winter only. Um, this way, we, we just talked about a, a, a leaf cleanup only setup. You yep. can see one pulling in down there one of my triple axles. We could walk around here for a lot, but it doesn't, it all looks the same at a certain point. Sure. Um, I'm excited to, to, for us to go over to the, the supply yard because that's the new that's the new creation and the home of hot pink and look forward to touring over there. All right, well guys, hang tight, little transition here and uh, we'll see you guys over at Great Deal. So we're over here at Great Deal Products, little transition. Troy's over here like shadow box and he's jumping up and down. You're hey, it's, you're a, it's morning, man. <laughs> Coffee, fun, beautiful day, it's November, man. I said, whatever you got, I want two of, you know Well, you're I mean? here, well, that's what I got. <laughs> Some time with Brian. Uh, if you guys knew what I'm looking at behind us, you guys would freak out. Uh, we're gonna go do the whole tour. There's a lot of TLC that still needs to get done here. We're gonna be a couple more weeks, months, maybe yeah. to, to wrap things up. Yeah, December 1st, we'll be opening in here and by spring, I'm it's gonna be gorgeous, but we're laying sod out front. We'll show you some of that. It's it's moving along fast. All right, give me like the 20 second like stats and numbers, and then we'll get into the whole tour, just so people can see like how big this thing really is. All right, so I don't know that there's, maybe I'm wrong, maybe there's something else out there in the country this size. I haven't seen it yet. I would love to tour it, if any of you know about one. So this is our new landscape supply yard. It's a 30,000 square foot industrial building. 40 foot clear heights, we can pull gravel trains in and dump salt. We're storing salt inside offices. We're building an entire store in there to service all our local friends and family and, and all the cool people who buy from us and et cetera here in the Brighton market. Four and a half, so we're sitting on four and a half acres. As you'll see along the way, we just got new pavement, new curbs. We're building all the brand new bin blocks. We'll be storing everything. So those are the stats, four and a half acres, 30,000 square foot building. About 5,000 tons stored inside, brand new scale, brick pavers, all the stuff. That's what we're done. 
<laughs> by the way, I'm building a pole barn. It's 55 by 48. Uh, it's gonna be huge. <laughs> Just having fun. <laughs> All right. Hey, when you're old and gray, you can do this. <laughs> this is awesome. All right. So this is kind of a first time uh, anybody's ever seen anything like this. So I know you're excited about sharing it off. I'm following you, brother. Where do you want to start? Well, I am excited. We were we we built the start of this business about 10, 11 years ago, right down the street. I rented a little facility. Over time, we outgrew it based on Zachary and Christian and and everybody on the Great Deal Products team. Um, so here we are now. So on this side over here is just the beginning of some of our outside storage of palleted material. So brick, et cetera, anything we would store in pallets outside. This direction, this pile of gravel will be a stone area where we will store more palleted material. As we cut through the building, the building has two loading docks so we can bring in anything that would come in via pallets or semis. It has four grade level doors, including the two that are the most fun. I think we'll end up over there. They will ultimately be a cool polypropylene. Anybody buying salt will drive in, the door will pull up for you. You'll pull in, you get warm and dry, back out again, grab a donut while you're in here. <laughs> so let's run through here. So this spot of the building, we're not quite sure what we're doing with. It's a little added spot, but we cleaned up the floors. Next week, there will be a fire rated wall here. So this spot we just walked through will be separate. Everything you're looking at here, again, Brian mentioned, needs a little TLC, we're not done yet. All of that mess will go away. But this spot I'm hanging out in with the finished floors will be a store filled with steel racks, picture the inside of a Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that, catering to all of our, again, all of our local residents and local contractors. This spot, this direction where the 12 foot mark is painted on the wall, that's where the glass door goes, that's the new front door of the building. It also comes in in a week or so. This little office here is where the point of sale, if you will, that's where people will walk in and um, get greeted. And if it's cold in the winter, you'll get your donut and your coffee and you'll load up down there at that big pile of salt, but we'll get over there later. This end of the building um, are the existing offices and so forth that we renovated. So this will be our operations team for the supply yard. This little area up here has, again, more to go, windows and so forth. Conference room, training room, sales offices. Uh, really quick, I gotta, I gotta uh, interrupt you. What's the hook? <laughs> Does that well, look? The hook, all right. So, so this building, this and this building was a crane building. So this building was built in 1981. The previous owner Jesus. to service train cars. So there was, there's a rail spur over here. They used to roll the train cars in this building on rail hang them from, there's a 60 ton crane on this end and a 60 ton crane on that end. They used to hang them, weld them, fix them. I don't know, I'm in the landscape business, so I'm not in the train business. Right. But that's what they were doing here, so if anybody needs anything 60 tons picked up <laughs> off of 18 inches of concrete, I'm your guy. In the meantime, <laughs> I hope you're hooked on hot pink. There you go. <laughs> As we head outside, you get to see a little bit of the project. So Brian, we're gonna have to navigate this pile of bin blocks. There's about 350 new bin blocks going in to create all of the all of the uh, storage areas out here. As I mentioned uh, a couple minutes ago, we just finished getting paved. It's been a long journey to get all of our site plan approvals through the city, etc. So we just got paved now, full court press. We're blessed with some amazing weather for November. Holy smoke! So landscape team is here building bins. Uh, irrigation team is here putting in irrigation. Sod team is here laying sod. So this exterior spot we're looking at here will all be eight foot high bin. Any aggregate you could ever need will be out here. Uh, this far end that isn't built yet, past the compactor, those will all be mulch bins. Okay. Multiple flavors of mulch, huge tall bins. All of them hold a couple hundred yards each. Designed to have a gravel area in between all the bins, obviously to move machines, trucks, as life goes on. This foundation right here is for the scale. And a little shout out to Bonnie Hutchinson who does almost all the cool scales in the world, but they're custom painting this one pink, <laughs> one of a kind. There you go. Just for us. And then I saw Brian's Tesla and it had some underlighting on it, so I got an idea that maybe we would underlight this one pink. Hey, there you I go. Know, maybe. <laughs> But, so the scale goes in in the next week or two. Wow. There'll be a scoreboard up there. You pull up on the scale. You look at a camera and a speaker. We say, hi, Brian, thanks for pulling in. However much your truck weighs, we'll be up on a scoreboard on that post. 
You drive around in the middle of the night, you pull in, you get loaded with warm, dry salt, you pull back around, you get weighed again, you wave, we say, thanks man, have a good day, go go enjoy doing your salt for the night, we'll see you later for a donut. Jeez, oh Pete. So that's how it's gonna work in the winter. Wow. Um, we're in reverse, that will be the front door where it's painted. This is all of the customer and handicap parking in the summer. I don't know who drove this here, but it's just kind of hanging out. Sorry, I brought my cool car today. Um, <laughs> Again, more bins on top of here um, for all of our mulch. I was required to build one heck of a retention pond for any of, any of you going through this development world anymore, at least in the part of the world that we live in. There's a lot of requirements, a lot more than you could imagine. Between curbs, water hookups, we had to put in new fire hydrants, um, gigantic retention ponds. It was a lot of site costs. Sure. So for anybody getting into the real estate game, Make sure you consider or talk to somebody who's gone through this because it's not just the price of the building when you're buying one. It's, there's there's a lot of other costs that are, are required. Right. So, wow. these doors have been ordered. They will be in in uh, January. So as I mentioned earlier, these doors will turn to like an opaque, if you picture a car wash or a oil change place, Yeah. that's what these will look like. As you pull up close to them, when we turn on the sensors, the door will open for you. You'll get loaded, the door will close behind you. Wow, so you're gonna go in over there and then horseshoe through? Um, in the winter time, you're gonna go across the scale here. All right. Come in, that's the front way. You're gonna go across the scale, get weighed empty, around the building, pull back in. Oh, through you'll the back You'll get side. loaded. Yes. Then you'll come right back out, hit the scale again, get loaded. That'll all be communicated. Everybody has an account set off. Gotcha. So you can go as fast as you want, or you can pull up, park, and come on in and Hang out. Hang out at three o'clock in the morning. Tell some uh, some crazy midnight stories of Pond Snow. What I did. That's what I did when I was driving a salt truck and pulled into other people's places. So a little dark in here, but hopefully Brian's camera will adjust. Yep. So these are the doors that will be clear and you'll be able to drive through. That one over there and the one right here behind Brian. And this is the beginning of the salt pile. So this is roughly, 5,000 square feet of salt, 10 or 12 feet deep. Y'all can do the math, it's thousands of tons. But it will be warm and dry for anybody who wants it. None of that wet, clumpy stuff. And uh, yeah, that's what we're doing out here, Jeez man. Little peach, brother. Salt, salt, having fun, the beautiful is, right? Not everybody's from Michigan, but in Michigan we get gravel trains, 50 tons. Yeah. Those trucks can fit in here and dump. So it's very efficient. For the truck driver, it's efficient for the salt storage. Um, and again, we're just here to help everyone and, and make it fun and, and as productive as we can. By the way, the uh, the pink uh, rails, <laughs> I was busting your chops. I said, you gotta paint everything pink. Uh, you were telling me some numbers just on the paint. Yeah. And it's, more, I think, more than what I make in a year, so. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite, but you know, it, they were yellow. Yeah. Right, yeah. so this end of the building, the original, they were yellow. Sure. And there is a big crane. Um, but yeah, I have to, everything has to be pink and white and blue. I love it. It's just how we roll. Branding at another level. It's just how we roll, man. I love it. Well, uh, where can people find more info if they want to check out Great Deal, uh, Hot Pink? I know we covered it on the podcast, but if people want to support Hot Pink, uh, you guys are shipping all across the country. So all of the same, um, hotpinkdeicer.com is where you would locate or Great Deal products here in Brighton. Um, What's either the address, one. real quick? This address is... 840 Rickett Road, Brighton, Michigan. Cool. We will officially be here by December 1st. Um, our charity is hotpinkhelpers.com. Um, but yeah. Check it out. Thanks to anybody who's checking it out. And, and if you see this before November 12th, I'll, I'll see you at uh, LAL. L -L -A -L. That's right. At Suburban. Right? There you go. Suburban collection. Holy cow. All right, Troy. Well, thanks so much for the tour, brother. Uh, seriously, congrats on everything. Super excited about everything you got going on. This place is incredible, and uh, thanks for everything you do for the industry. Uh, my help, and thanks, or my pleasure, and thank you for all your help, Brian. I appreciate you bet, it. brother. Thanks, right. guys. See you guys. See you guys. Take care.